turn Matty White um, back into the side? Is it a bit of a risk? Oh yeah, there was a little bit of it. There's certainly a little bit of a risk, but we we actually give him an extra week of training to make sure that we we tried to control some of that risk because Matty's got a bit of a history. Um, but you know, we're really comfortable that he's ready to go. I mean, if you watched him train for the last two weeks, you'd say he's he's more than ready to play. So at some stage, you got to you got to let them play. Yeah, we've missed we've missed a bit of uh, you know, not going to say but we've missed a bit of uh, Whitey, a bit of Polly, those sort of players in our side a little bit. So yeah, we're we're really keen to get them back into the team when we could. Oh no, that's that's not. We we go in thinking that he's available to play a full game. That's what we have to. Be. That's why we took the extra week. We wanted to make sure that if we, we were going to put him out there, that we were comfortable enough that there was no restrictions on him. Hamstring injuries and the history says that there's you know there's a there's a risk in re-injuring for anyone that's had hamstring is history. So that that's our risk. But that was going to be there this week, next week, whenever we just made that decision. Sammy Gray, pretty close. Yeah, Sam's really close. He's in in amongst it, but uh, you know he's. Um, what we would like to see is some real consistency about the way people are able to play for the Magpies and you know their form has been solid but we'd like really good consistency form and if we can get that they'll then deserve their opportunity to come up and hopefully then we're bringing in people who are in really good form. As the final this way, it gets tougher, can it be hard to keep the mood buoyant amongst the boys and keep everyone up there? No, we've been really focused as a club which is really, I mean, really pleasing that we've been able to maintain our focus and we haven't lost sight of what we're trying to do and that's to achieve a performance each week you know, and that's, that's the best way to be able to approach anything is if you stay in the weekly process it's much easier to keep your focus narrow and that's what we're trying to do and you know on the team and the boys have been able to do that you know they've had a you know we, we, we've had a season that's been up and down too much but we know that but the very next opportunity you get to try and fix that is what you've got to focus on that's what we continue to do. How about Mason Crackers? Oh, I'll be 2-3 weeker it's typical hamstring it's not a not a, not a massive hamstring but any hamstrings you know typical 21 days so you know Crack's probably going to be somewhere around that type of time. It was the very last kick of the game, which is quite amazing. You, you know, you get through 89% of the game for Craig, which is a high game time, but on the last ball that he took and kicked it, um, it just gave him a little bit of a pop, so that put him out. More or less, you've been pretty, well, you've been pretty happy with what you've seen from him this year? Oh, he's been a significant improver, you know, from where he's come from. It's quite amazing to, to where he's at right now, and, you know, and clearly he'd be playing again this week if he, if he wasn't hurt, so he's, he's established himself sort of almost back into the... AFL team at the moment from from the rookie list, which is significant. Yeah, it is, and he's, he's a, obviously he's a much more mature player. So, but he's missed a lot of football in the last three or four years. So, you know, we we know his age is a bit higher than what his actual games are. So, we, we look forward to the improvement still coming from Craig. He went back a couple of weeks ago. Um, what sort of things did, were you keen for him to work on before coming back into the side? Just his ability to defend hard for the whole of the game, and you know, Craig's really good for most parts of the game, but he ha he'd have lapses where he wasn't quite doing exactly what we wanted. And sometimes from people outside going, well, gee, what aren't you seeing here? What, what's not quite going on? Well, you need to make sure that your team cares at a high standard of the whole game. And that's where Crack was the one who actually said, you know, his comment to me was that, mate, more than fair, I, you know, I need to make sure I'm working on that. And again, that's that progress that he's making from being out of football for a long time that you can't come in and play, you know, 60% 60, 60 or 80%. You've got to come in and play 100% footy. I hope we can kick a lot of goals. That's what I do hope. I mean, hopefully we can score heavily and restrict their scoring. But you know, both sides are you know both sides are having challenging seasons. So both sides are looking for an opportunity to to get back onto the the right side of the ledger, and that's get a win on the board. And we know that for us, we've got to control what we got to do, and not get spooked by anything that Essendon are trying to do to us. I look. I said after the game, if it was unemotional, I'd say it was a great game of football, a good game of football to watch and be involved with. And both sides, at times, played pretty solid football. That's been our problem, though, is our inconsistency, is to be able to do it for four quarters. That's, mate, no, no secret. I'm still chasing the four-quarter performance, and you know, I'm hopeful that it's this week. Tim, since uh, Kane retired, have you found a time or a game where you would have, would really like to have had a run with player in the team? And do you see anyone potentially taking on that role? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we certainly still look to have someone take care of him. We've had Ollie have a couple of opportunities and some big players and you know, Pendlebury and Kennedy and people like that. So we've tried that and we've tried a couple of other different things. So we're actually grooming and developing that player to come in. Yeah, I, I'm a coach that would like to have someone that's available to play that role. You know, we, we know our past has been great because we've had Kane, who was a fantastic person at doing it for a long period of time. And, and any new opportunity that comes, you, you've got to take some time to... To, to massage it and get it to where you want it to be and, and look for the right op option for that position and, and we're doing that now. You talk about consistency or lack of consistency this year. Do you feel the playing group has made some pretty important lessons this year? I think, you know, looking at the 
Yeah, I think the whole football club has. I think we, we've all we've all learnt that you know that some of the dangers that come about in a football season and you know and we've identified them we're still working to to, you know, to improve on them and, and our season's still going and we're, and we're going to work to improve on them again on Saturday night the showdown obviously an emotional game it's always a massive game and it's and it gives you heaps of pride um, how have you noticed the players this week or have they sort of no, no, I haven't seen any of that. I haven't seen you know, you know history showdowns and all that stuff. All that on its own is you know it's, it's sometimes a bit of an issue. But you know, and we've had some other stuff on top of that. But I'm not. We're not looking at that as in any way, shape, or form as a a reason for us not to perform at our best on Saturday night. We're going over there really confident to have a real crack at it. Oh, I think they've been, you know, they've been challenged like us throughout the season. They haven't had things go the way they would like them to go, and you know, they've had some players. Not in the form they'd like them to be in, same as us. You know, they've had, they've had some distractions, all the things that, that happen to a football club through an AFL season. They're not that different to most AFL clubs. The, the distractions can be different, but you know, from our point of view, uh, you know, we're, we're we're going after the game to try and get a win that we need to get, and not too much worried about what Essendon are at. Yeah, but, um, I'm just going to say, sorry, um, with the with Essendon's rough, that's probably been, and, and now we've had some sides have focused on recently. Um, Oh well, not so much that. I mean, last week I think if he's referring back to one game. You're looking at Goldstein. Goldstein's all Australian ruckman. He's been the best, you know, and and he, and he got on top in the game last week. That's not the first time that he's been able to do that to a football side this year. So we're not expecting that we're going to have total dominance there. We 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 hope that Lobie and and Ryder together can cause them some significant headaches and give our our mids a first opportunity. That's what the number one thing we're trying to get. No, no, more about the, just being able to stay stay hard in the contest for, for the whole period of the game. And, you know, we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able to concentrate for the whole parts of the game. And that's, that's what we're learning that, you know. And as, as a club, we're learning that, that you know, this game's brutal, it's vicious. And, you know, there's there's so many fluctuations in a football season, you know, and it's, it happens. It happens all the time. And it's not something we're happy about, not something we want to accept. And it's something that I'm going to do everything I can to make sure it doesn't continue to happen. Yeah, no, we can. We, it's, it's a team connection is what we've got to have right, and it's not that it's not that they're deliberately trying to do the wrong thing. It's just that at the moment, the key moments that they tr they have to do the certain thing is that they're they're getting they're second guessing what that is for themselves, you know, and that comes about sometimes when you you're not totally confident in what you want to do, and and that's where we're at at the moment. We've just got to go back and say, okay, we know our best. Look, look let's not make moments. We know our best is really strong, but we haven't been able to deliver that. So we challenge ourselves to keep searching for that. Oh no, I think I think Jay and, uh, and and the club and ourselves we're all we're all comfortable enough to know exactly where the position is, and we're not going to talk about where Jay's contracts and stuff. And that's not the right thing to do. But you know, we if you ask Jay and you know, ask us, we're we're comfortable enough to know that things are in a, in a good position. On Monday night, Caroline Wilson um, said that uh, there was she heard there was some concerns from Wilson within the club pre-season that some of the players might have got a bit of a head of themselves after the last couple of seasons, and that might be. A reason for a bit of a form dip this year. Have you got any response to that, Tom? Uh, I've got no idea what she's talking about. Caroline, um, Caroline's, you know, she's, she she does a good job in her job, but uh, I don't know whether you think people are getting it. You don't know that unless you're at the club. You know, and from our point of view, we, we worked our butts off right through the pre-season, right through the summer and, and ready to go at the start of the year and we haven't delivered the results. So all those questions rightly come your way and we have to handle those questions.